are joined by Coach Charlie Strong from USF. The Bulls are 7-4 and four overall, 3-4 and four in the American Athletic Conference. Bulls played at Temple this past Saturday. Temple won the game 27-17. to 17. Uh, USF is back at home this Friday. They'll take on UCF at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa. That will be a 4.15 p.m. Eastern start on ESPN. Coach, thank you so much for joining us on the call. If you would just take a minute to tie up the game against Temple, please. And what you expect to see is you're back at home uh, on Friday to face uh, UCF. Well, just coming off a tough uh, tough loss and uh, didn't take advantage of the opportunities. And Temple get a, did a good job of just hanging in there. But looking forward to this Friday against uh, UCF. And the thing about them is it's senior night for us. And uh, seniors have done a really good job with this program. We really appreciate each one of them. UCF has had uh, two outstanding years, 23-game winning streak, playing with a lot of confidence, and we were really excited about the matchup. <clears throat> we'll take questions for Coach Charlie Strong, please. Star 1 on your telephone keypad will put you in the queue, and then the operator will introduce you. And we'll go to Dan Tatora, wakeupcalldt.com. Good afternoon, Coach. How are you? Good, Dan. How are you doing? Doing well. You just spoke on it a little bit about this matchup, uh, UCF and, and USF. Just what you can say, you know, rivalry-wise, you know, a, a big-time end of the regular season. There's a bunch of rivalry games ar- around the country. Just the importance of this one and how, uh, no matter where either team is at, this always seems to be one of those big-time games that is very close when it all comes down to it. Well, anytime it's a rival game, Dan, it's, it's going to be close. And, you know, both teams are – or you know, hour and a half apart, and they played with one another. Some of them grew up uh, next to one another. They were the same high school, so they're very familiar with one another. But it always comes down to it. You know, it's always a tight game, and guys are going to play hard because they really a lot of them are playing against their friends. And when we look at, at this matchup, uh, you mentioned UCF and just what UCF has done. I asked you last week about this conference and the importance of it. Just, uh, you know, what you think it'll take for this conference to get the respect that it deserves because uh, the thing that's always said is just keep winning. And with what you've been able to do with South Florida, with Cincinnati getting better, Temple getting better, UCF being 23-0, and Houston and Memphis on the other side, uh, there's a lot to be said about what this conference has already done in winning. So just kind of what you, what else you think needs to happen when the teams are doing what they're supposed to do. Well, you're always going to get knocked down because everyone thinks because someone's in a, uh, you know, supposedly a power five, they, they're they going to always try to build them up to be so good. But, uh, you know, we got enough teams in this conference. If, you know, I always say this, you, you look at the, the power fives or whatever, you know, it's only, it's only going to be two or three good teams in each one of those conferences. Then throw us in there, we're going to be able to play with anybody else. So I, I think that we just got to continue to improve on the field and, and let our work speak for itself. And we have really good student athletes. They're really great in the classroom. So we just got to continue to just build our brand. I appreciate that, Coach, and good luck this week. All righty, thank you. And next we'll go to Mark Naraducci, Philadelphia Inquirer. Hey, Coach. Um, On that punt return to put Temple ahead, it looked like you had a defense pretty well, but then he shifted fields. Uh, could you maybe talk about that and also about kind of the individual effort of the right mate? Well, it was a great, it was a great run by him. You're right. He, we had him corralled, and he was able to get back to the backside and did get down the sideline. It's where he picked up his blockers, and, you know, they led him into the end zone. Um, what was it that went that went right in the first half and then just turned for you guys? Well, you're up 17, and you had three times you had the ball on the plus uh, on plus territory to start the third quarter, and we didn't score, and we didn't take advantage of the opportunity. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. And next we'll go to Trace Trilco, Nightline Sports Network. Hello, Coach. Uh, what do you think the long-term impact is on the American for uh, UCF success over these past two seasons? Well, it's been great because everyone has seen it, and they've made a ton of statements. They have a 23-game winning streak, and they wouldn't be Auburn last year in the bowl game. So they've done a really good job, and and uh, you know it's, that pro- it's a program that's really uh, getting a lot of attention, attention that they deserve. 
because they are not only outstanding players, but outstanding coaches and outstanding administration. When you look back at the film from UCF's game Saturday with Cincinnati, did it surprise you the way they performed on defense? No, they have they have a really good defense and they, they played well. It was a you know a ESPN game, a game day there, so you know the players will be ready to go play. Thank you, coach. Thank you. And next we'll go to Nathan Bond with the Daily Stampede. Hey, coach, how are you? Good, Nathan. Uh, your defense in the last four games gave up 1,100 yards on the ground. What? What can you say to the effort of that they did stopping Reichwell Armstead uh, on Saturday? Well, they did a good job of tackling. And that's what it got, and getting in your gaps. And when you give up that many yards, if you're not in your gaps and you don't tackle well, you're going to give up a lot of yards. And did a very good job of it. And guys were – you had to be a disciplined team on defense, and we had not been. So on Saturday we were. <clears throat> Uh, and uh, on the flip side, offensively, uh, the 3.7 yards per play was the lowest since 2014 for the school. What what went wrong for you guys offensively in that second half? Uh, we just we had our opportunities to take advantage of them, and we got to be able to move the ball. You got to get first downs, and you got to create points. <clears throat> yeah, and final question, uh, arbitrary at this point. Uh, you guys had a chance in, late in the first half to get the ball back with almost two minutes left. And uh, you, what went to your decision making to not call them the timeout to maybe drive down the field again to put more points on the scoreboard? Well, we got to get the ball back. That's when I think they um, we got the ball back with a minute or something to go. And I just said, hey, just run the clock out. We get the ball start the second half. <clears throat> All right. Appreciate it, Coach. <laughs> Moving on, we'll go to Don Wade with the Daily Memphian. Yeah, Coach, obviously some of uh, the league's teams have played good non-conference opponents, but is the only way to kind of take things up another level and maybe get a little more recognition nationwide is for the teams in the league to try to schedule even tougher outside the league? Well, you'd like to schedule tougher, but, you know, those teams got to be willing to play us. And some of them will play you, but they want you to come to their place and they don't want to give you a return trip back to your to to whom, to whom our place. So it's that's what's really tough is, like, you like to go somewhere to play them, but you like for that team to come back to let your fans see them in your home stadium. And that's where, they, you know, a lot of issues lie. And, you know, so uh, we we try to schedule, and, we, and it's like – the rest of the teams in the league no different than we are. They'll, they'll play anyone, but we just like to put something back in return. Take one final question, Coach Tom. And we'll take that from Leo Haggerty with It's Sports Magazine. Good afternoon, Coach. Hey, you Leo? I'm doing fine, Coach. Thanks for asking. Yeah. With all the concerns, Coach, with targeting and the limited time that you have in practice to teach tackling, has tackling become a lost art? Well, it's just all about head placement. You, you just notice you can't leave with the crown of your head. And it's, it's safety also, Leo. But it is a, it's, what they're doing with it is really great because I think that, you know, in their long run, and even like now, is protecting the, the – uh, the, the student athletes and who's protecting them from getting a, getting an injury that you know for some it can be a very serious injury but you know I have no problem with it uh, and we try to teach tackling where you know we try to tackle the proper way and you're just gonna have to do it and you're gonna have to do it each and every day and you know when you, when you get guys in all in the um, preseason camp you're gonna have to just do it it's got to be a part of your individual drills. Thank you, Coach. Have a happy Thanksgiving. All right, same to you, Leo. Coach, thanks so much for your time, not only today, but all year long. Uh, appreciate you joining us, and best of luck to you going forward.